Dunkin is putting a whole new spin on pumpkin at Dunkin with our new pumpkin cream cold brew. Smooth, bold, cold brew topped with velvety pumpkin cream cold foam made with cinnamon and nutmeg spices. And there's more pumpkin for you to love, like the delicious fall classic, our pumpkin spice signature latte. Rich espresso topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. That's how we pumpkin at Dunkin. Sip into the fall season with the $3 medium pumpkin cream cold brew or pumpkin spice signature latte. America runs on Dunkin. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Exclusion apply. Valid on pumpkin spice signature latte only in all cold foam cold brew. My name is Rubbish. Isms. Isms. Juxtapose. Didactic. Rubbish. Well, no, it's rubbish podcast. Hello and welcome to episode number 68 of Modern Art is Rubbish. And I am fiddling with my microphone while I am recording this podcast, Tom. So sorry. How are you, Tom? Yeah, I'm very well, Marcus. Yes, I've randomly got a resonator guitar. <laughs> Oh, you got a tambourine. <laughs> yeah. No. This is this is a bit of a musical episode because you've got a new single out, which we're going to be playing at the end. Is that correct? That is correct. What do I win? <laughs> I hadn't got any prizes prepared. Sorry, Marcus. What about a rattle of your tambourine? Okay, yeah, yeah. You win a rattle of my tambourine. Yay. <laughs> right. Today, got a couple of news stories. Uh, one involving vegetables, Ooh. the dumping of vegetables. No. And where would we be without a little bit of Banksy chat? Yeah. Modern Banksy is rubbish! <laughs> <laughs> right, so on with the first story. Basically, it's a piece of artwork by the Spanish Welsh artist... Rafael Perez Evans and he did a piece of work called Grounding so what he did was he's doing a uh, Masters in Fine Arts at Goldsmiths College in uh, London it's quite a famous one I believe that's where Damien Hurst went and what he did was he got 29 tonnes of carrots and he dumped them outside the college what do you think about that, Tom? Uh, 29 tonnes. It does seem like a lot of carrots. Though they are quite cheap, aren't they, carrots? So is he quite a wealthy student being able to afford 29 tonnes of carrots? Uh, yeah, I don't know if they were premium carrots. Apparently, they were uh, vegetables uh, that were unwanted, unwanted and never would have been sold in shops. So they would have gone to waste anyway. Uh, is, that, is that what he said? That's what he said, yeah. And uh, apparently when the piece is finished, uh, they're going to be used as animal feed. What he did was he just uh, dumped them outside the college. I assume he got permission. And he didn't put any writing about them or say what they were about and left people to make up their own mind. F*** you, Goldsmith! F*** you! (laughs) (laughs) I think he might have got permission. (laughs) Uh, But he did make a uh, mention... (laughs) He did He did make a mention of it on his website, which he said it was about, you know, about the tensions between rural and the city. You know, I think there's a, quite a tradition of uh, farmers dumping stuff as protest. Uh, what, manure and that sort of thing? Yeah, they like manure, don't they? I saw someone <laughs> yeah. else who, uh, who dumped all these tyres in someone's front garden, but I think that was because the guy just fly-tipped loads of tyres in his field yes so it, it's the, like the politicians who dump all those legal paperworks all over over a farm over a farm yeah well i'm trying to think of in reverse what the politicians would do to the rural community dump a oh. dump a load of biros in a field <laughs> <laughs> dump a load of laws lowering standards <laughs> oh i didn't say that post brexit <laughs> so yeah um So the other thing as well is when people were looking at it, they did say they were thinking about wastage as well, although it looks like it's a waste of a lot of carrots, even though they are going to animal feed. A lot of people said, well, 
this is the kind of waste that's going on. These carrots were never going to be sold. They were just going to be chucked or put for animal feed anyway. So it's kind of like highlights the wastage that we do. It confronts you with this big orange mass. 29 tonnes, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Can we look? People can we that, look up on Google how much twenty nine tons of non premium carrots costs? Do you want me to look it up? Yes. Cost of twenty nine tons. That's twenty nine thousand pounds. They sound right. It doesn't sound right, does it? it? Sounds a lot. It is a lot of carrots, though, isn't it? Yeah, so it's 50 per kilo. If it's 50 per kilo, or half a kilo, yeah, that's right. 29,000 pounds. That can't be right. He spent 20... He must have got a deal. He must have got a deal on rubbish carrots. Yeah, he must have got given them... Got them for free. I don't know if he's... I don't know. Is he from the country? Well, yeah, he's, he's Spanish-Welsh. Spanish-Welsh. Okay, so he's from a long line of Spanish-Welsh farmers. Yeah, and he's he's done. He's gone to London on on behalf of his Spanish Welsh at farming ancestry to dump carrots on the streets of London. I have no idea <laughs> if that's. Uh, I don't know. That's that could be. I don't know if that's slander or something. Is it? It's not. Is it it's suggesting someone's intent on dumping carrots who has actually dumped carrots <laughs> slander <laughs> I accuse you of being a carrot dumper <laughs> so he didn't leave any, he didn't say it was a political statement but then on his website he, he later did or at the time he did talk on his website about it well he said also you know he said the therapeutic technique of grounding involves because the piece was called grounding as I said the therapeutic technique of grounding involves doing activities that ground or el electrically reconnect you to the earth yeah I don't know what that means that, that means honest. taking off your shoes doesn't it <laughs> well yeah but I reckon people were climbing on the carrots I heard quite a few people took a home and did a lot of carroty things I oh, made some carrot and coriander soup, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, carrot cake, all those kind of things. Yeah. So there you go. That's um, any anything more you feel that you want to add on I, carrots? Because it, it did look like quite an orange piece. Yeah. And also it's very positive. Yeah. What vitamins are in carrots? Because um, there's been there's a lot in the news about vitamin. Vitamin D is it is in the news a lot at the moment. Isn't it beta carotene that's in carrots? I don't know. I think that's what's in it. Yeah. Apparently you can get very ill if you eat too many carrots, but you have to eat quite a lot. Yeah, so I've eaten too many carrots before. I used to like carrots and hummus and I used to buy a bag of carrots and I'd go through the whole bag and I turned orange. Did you actually get an orangey tinge? Yeah, I did. Are you making that or is that true? No, you, you can really ask did. Joe, you can ask my my friends. Yeah, it's true. I, I can tell you friends who noticed. Did you look a bit like a Lumpa Lumpa, but taller? I was a bit more, I don't know, are Lumpa Lumpas orange? They're kind of orangey, aren't they? Or They're kind orangey of Donald Trumpy. And grounded. Trump, Donald Trumpy orange. Do you think Donald Trump eats a lot of carrots? I don't think he does. I think he does. I think he eats a lot of carrots. I don't <laughs> think it's anything to do with dodgy spray tan. <laughs> think he eats a lot of carrots. <laughs> a hell of a lot of carrots. <laughs> yeah, he does. Make carrots great again. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that might be in it. Because he's a, he's a big lad, isn't he, Donald Trump? Yeah. So 29 tonnes of carrots, that might be the sort of thing that gets delivered to the White House every week, you might be suggesting. Yeah, but it's, yeah, he's, he's, he's less healthy eating than that, isn't he, really? You'd think so. Yeah, I'd think so. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. eating that many carrots a week would make you a big lad, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. It would. I, I don't know what else I can say on art and carrots now. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of like, I, we're never going to talk about art and carrots again. Ever. I reckon we will, at least once. We won't. We're on episode 68. I'm going to bring them up, surely, before we get to episode 969. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then you do that. I'm, I'm really, I, I, I don't know, I feel really down now that we've talked about carrots for so long. Okay, yeah. Let's, right. Can we move on, please, Marcus? Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> on to Banksy. Banksy. Right, so Banksy, an oil painting has just been sold by Banksy and basically is parodying the Claude Monet work, uh, the water lilies, incredible painting, incredible series of paintings. And it went for £7.5 million, pounds, which is about $9.8 million. No way. And it's called Show Me the Money. Show Me the Money, not the Money. Show Me the Money. And basically, it's got it's like the water lilies by Monet, as I said, and they've got uh, things like a shopping trolley and a traffic cone dumped in there. I, so. I feel like I've seen this idea in another piece of art that Banks is using. Do you know the thing Ophelia, the painting Ophelia? Yes. Have you and uh, have you seen uh, Ophelia floating with loads of? rubbish in the in oh the yes that 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 read working yeah 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 so Definitely. that yes yeah, so i don't know who, who's ophelia by that painting that's by millier uh sir john everett millier which is the uh victorian artist pre-raphaelite actually um yeah so you you said you've got a friend who's got it on his wall or something yeah so they've got a version of it but rather than floating in the river it's all covered in she's floating in a river full of rubbish discarded Ooh. bottles like hula hoop packet not wrappers oh which is not in the original painting i mean correct me if i'm wrong no i have seen that working i don't actually know who did that who did that other version all uh, right yes yeah, so this is very so that version um of ophelia is similar to what banks he's done here to in show me the monet yeah, so I don't know if Banksy's actually painted the Monet. I think it may just be a, a kind of like a, a painting that he's painted over. Yeah. Perhaps. I don't know actually what Banksy's process is for that. Um, yeah, it's pretty much, I think, most rivers you go to now. I don't think I've gone for a walk uh, along a river in the UK now and not seen rubbish. Yeah, I'm, seen, I've, ne I've never walked across a river over a bridge and not been able to see at least two shopping trolleys in the water <laughs> actually the seriously there is quite a lot of shopping trolleys you come across as well and that's even in the nice parts but they're normally waitrose shopping trolleys as opposed to uh i don't know asda which is the equivalent of walmart trolleys all right yeah or, yeah. or lidl or audi and, and when you say like trolleys you you're talking you're not talking about a nice family of four having a picnic on the water we're talking he just dumped yeah just dumped yeah yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I guess trolleys don't really float, do they normally? No, they're pretty. They they are actually probably the most rubbish things for floating because they're heavy and full of holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this Monet would be the second most expensive banks he ever sold. Um, he uh, well, recently. Do you, yeah. Well, that yeah. that's interesting. But how would it compare to Monet's paintings? Uh, a lot, a lot, so lot what does, cheaper. A lot cheaper, yeah. Does Monet go for big cash? I, I'm I'm going to guess entirely off my head, you're probably talking in excess of 20 million for a Monet of that quality. And I'm probably really underestimated. It could be 70, 80 million. I don't know. I honestly don't know the figure, but it's a lot. It's a, it will be a lot more than a Banksy for a Walter, if you can even buy one. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't be any point Monet, Monet had he still been alive, doing a Show Me the Banksy artwork. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Painting on a Banksy with some water lilies. Girl with the water lily. That wouldn't work. Yeah, so as I was saying, his, uh, his, his most expensive work uh, was Devolved Parliament. And that was the famous one which showed monkeys in a sort of like a parliament building. Well, I don't well, know if you remember that chimp. one. Chimpanzees, I yes, presume. Yes, yeah, yeah. With it, it's all about the uh, the word evolve, isn't it? Devolve. Yes, yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, and that went for just shy shy of uh, ten million. It went for nine million eight hundred seventy nine thousand pounds. Yeah, and uh, that's what's that, about twelve million two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, nice. So yeah, he's a. Uh, I recommend uh, checking if you've got any Banksy's in your house. Yeah, well, so 
I know you've t- you've uh, recommended back buying Banksy's to people a long time ago. Yes, I did. I have done, and I never did my bought it myself, but I have recommended it, and they've uh, got very good returns. Very good returns. Uh, yeah. So the the Banksy you recommended to someone you used to know, it was like a print, wasn't it? A limited edition print. Yeah. It was a girl. It was girl with a balloon. And it actually, uh, at the time, I said to him, oh, you want to get one? I didn't have money to get one. And it was probably about, I suppose it was about £200 to buy at the time. Um, it was an unsigned edition of £600. Um, so let's let's call him Claire, n- not his real name. Yeah, the mis- <laughs> call him Claire. <laughs> yeah, well, at the time when I spoke to Claire, um, yeah, I, uh, they went out and they bought it and it cost them about 200 pounds and i checked it's worth about 106,000 now what for an it's for 600 there's 600 of them and they're all worth 100,000 yeah i think that's because girl with a balloon is probably one of the most uh, famous works i saw he got in the world he got an award didn't he this week for his stab proof vest a, oh, did a he? design award yeah no, oh, I don't know if it's that great a design. I think it's for. It should have got an ironic award for being ironic, but I don't know if it's great design. Is it? Oh, hang on, let's have a look. Look it up. Banksy Design Award. Shall I look it up? Hang on, bear with us. Okay. All right. No, it has didn't win an award. It's been uh, Banksy Stab Proof Vest worn by Storms at Glastonbury it has been nominated for a major design award. The item of clothing, which is emblazoned with a black and white Union Jack flag, is up for the Beasley Designs of the Year prize, the winner of which will be announced by London Design Museum in November. Oh, cool. Oh, that's good. Who's that? Where did you see that on? on uh, sorry, that's on the in- independent newspaper that uh, where oh, okay, I read cool. that Oh, okay, cool. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, okay. All oh, right. Oh, well, there you go. Stab vest. Design news. <laughs> Stab best <laughs> design news. <laughs> <laughs> now a short advertisement break. Why have you dumped all of these high definition turtles outside of the university? 29 tons of high definition turtles. So just head over to modernartisrubbish.com and subscribe to our email list to get your free artwork and to be updated on the latest Modern Art is Rubbish news. Cool. Well, uh, that wraps it up for this week, Tom. Um, I think we are due... uh, Okay, so, sorry, that wraps it up for this week, Tom. I think just... Uh, to mention if you would like to follow us on Facebook, social media and everything else like that. And if you want to get hold of us, info at modernartisrubbish.com. And finally, Tom, I think to play out, it's Tom Single Time. Can you do the Tom Single Time jingle? It's Tom Single Time! Yes, so what's it called, Tom? It's called Phoebe the Chemical Maker. Phoebe the Chemical Maker, and that's available on all good streaming platforms, which we'll put a link on the website to. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so it's out on Wednesday the 4th. What day is this being released? This is being released tomorrow. So this is a pre-exclusive preview. (laughs) Excellent. Well, let's play it then, Tom.
With MailChimp, you get a whole lot more than a URL. You get an all-in-one marketing platform to help drive sales. That means you can connect your data to make more informed, smarter decisions. And you get powerful automation tools like our customer journey builder to ensure you never miss an opportunity to turn shoppers into loyal customers. So if you're ready to integrate your marketing and boost sales, get started today at MailChimp.com slash smart marketing. MailChimp, built for growing businesses. Dunkin' is putting a whole new spin on pumpkin at Dunkin' with our new pumpkin cream cold brew. Smooth, bold, cold brew topped with velvety pumpkin cream cold foam made with cinnamon and nutmeg spices. And there's more pumpkin for you to love, like the delicious fall classic, our pumpkin spice signature latte. Rich espresso topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. That's how we pumpkin at Dunkin'. Sip into the fall season with the $3 medium pumpkin cream cold brew or pumpkin spice signature latte. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Exclusion apply. Valid on pumpkin spice signature latte only in all cold foam cold brew. 